In the previous video, we went over the basic movement, and we talked about a simple one-directional move blend space, where we combined, at first, two animations, and then we moved up to have four. And we went over the blend weights, and then also how to show the preview. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over rotation, because we've only been going in pretty much one axis, or one direction itself. So now we're going to go into the step rotation, and if we move this and see what these characters are doing, or these examples, we have one guy that's pretty much in an idle. And right down here, we can see that we're in a rifle idle animation. The next thing that we have is we actually have a rotation of 90 degrees in both of these directions. So we have one rotating one way and one rotating another way. And this, in combination, allows us to be able to dynamically rotate or change the turn angle of our character. So if I were to look inside of the animation layers, because down here in the dimensions we have a turn angle, we can change it just like before, and now we have a character that is rotating, or step rotating, all the way around. Now, keep in mind, we don't actually have to limit it to 90. We can limit it to 45, we can limit it to 180 even. And then adding all of these blends in, you have a proper turn. So let's go down and go to the turn itself. If I double click on that, we now have a turn and a walk. And what this allows us to do is actually dynamically move. So we're taking the additional extraction, which is the move speed, and then we're allowing or exposing the dimension of the turn speed into this blend space. Let me close this up just a little bit so we can see it better. And we're going to shrink this down. So if I were to change the turn speed on this, you would notice that we now have this directional indicator. And if I were to change it even more, we would be able to change the direction of the turn, or the angle of the turn, from the left or the right. And through this, we can see just this small amount of tweaking between an idle and a left and right turn animation allows us to be able to run forward and then change our actual direction in the turn through as simple as three animations. So this is basically how we would go over a simple turn, but maybe we want to do something that's a little bit different, and that's where an idle to move comes into play. So if we go up to an idle to move here, we can see that we are now stutter stepping. And what this is doing is it's allowing us to start our idle to move. And this is combining two of the blend spaces that exist right here. So if we were to turn it a little bit, now we have this directional that's stopping and starting. If I go into the blend space itself, you'll see that we're doing the same thing, except we're doing run start only. Now this is important to keep in mind because you have the idle to move, and then you also have the move to idle. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second. And quick note, if you go to display options, we can reset the character himself. So we can snap him back into place. So let's go up into the search, and we're going to type in M2I. And this is the actual move to idle. So instead of the run start, we will be able to do run stop. So down here, now you'll notice we're actually doing that basic start animation you see the player doing. And with this, we're able to combine them, or the left and right values, to be able to create a blend space that's able to reference both the left and the right sides. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this because we've gone into that. And that's where we come back to the actual idle to move comb file. So we can see down here we actually have an idle to move combination because two B space files exist. And this is the first instance where we're actually seeing the combination file, or as we call it, a combi file. And if I were to come down in here, I can change my turn angle to the left or the right values based on whatever I'm doing. So this has just gone over a simple understanding of turning as well within our one-dimensional blend space, and also going over the idle to move and the move to idle, and how we combine those to begin to not only have the ability to move forward or backward at different rates, say, walking, jogging, or sprinting, but also being able to have a turn and a dynamic system to turn in itself to create that winding effect of the player as we move around.
So now that we've covered the basic one-dimensional, we're ready to move up to a two-dimensional blend space and be able to extrapolate information and combine turning with different speeds that we haven't been able to do solely through the one dimension because we haven't combined both of those facets into one file.